one thing that I, I mentioned uh, prior to the break, uh, money printing. This uh, has been, you know, everybody is saying mm. that is the, you know, uh, uh, the worst thing that could happen to a country. And the opposition goes on saying billions of uh, rupees have been printed, this and that. Uh, what is your take on that? Well, Mahesh, I mean, money has to be printed for an economy to turn. So the lubricant of an economy is money. Now, the theory of money printing causing inflation is slightly different because they, the theory says that excess money supply leads to higher prices. Now, that is based on a particular mathematical formula where they look at money stock versus a quantity of goods produced. Uh, uh, sorry, quantity of goods produced, prices equals money stock into velocity. So that's the mathematical formula that they generally look at in terms of trying to see how inflation is caused by money printing. So in this particular uh, formula, the, uh, the variables that are up there, there are certain assumptions. Now these assumptions are only at a textbook level. They are not experienced not in the real world. On experienced in the real world. And that has been proven globally, not in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka still clings on to this theory, and that's all right. We are, there are different views of this, but in globally, no one really pays too much attention to money printing causing inflation. Empirical evidence, if you look at it, doesn't prove it. I mean, if you look at China, China's excess money stock is about 252% of GDP. Uh, let's talk about the lords of the opposition, America. <laughs> America is the same. America is no different. UK is no different. Exactly. Right? Japan is no different. Walls of money has been so why do, why do people give so much concern about this fact? You know, money printing, money printing, money printing. Oh no, that's going to pretty much, uh, you know, ruin the economy. Or why do you think? I mean, again, I said, because people are probably not really reading into what is happening in the world over. I mean, because we study something and we think we take it as gospel truth. You know, something that we studied in uh, 30 years ago uh, definitely doesn't Apply hold true anymore. anymore. That's how the world has changed. Otherwise, these types of business cycle emergencies, uh, emerging business cycles will never take place. Uh, so, uh, so we unfortunately have been trapped in this type of mentality. mentality. And even there was a brilliant article, uh, uh, interview on Bloomberg, where uh, one of these gentlemen explained that money, uh, money supply causing or inflation is a result of money supply it has been trashed and that it doesn't exist anymore. It's only a few people that still try and uh, tout about it and make a bit of an issue out of it. But empirical evidence doesn't show that. the. Assumptions are also a huge, uh, there's a huge concern about the assumptions because they look at uh, velocity being constant, then they look at money, the variables of money on, the, on, on those particular uh, uh, variables are fairly distorted because actually what does create inflation? It's money in your hand, money in circulation not money in your, in your checking account, not money in your fixed deposit. But nevertheless, they aggregate all that into money stock and they use it to show whether it causes inflation. While one more last point, on, on the quantity side, quantity is at its maximum. It's the economy is at its fullest employment and full production. Nowhere in the world will you find that type of situation. In Sri Lanka? In Sri Lanka or in the world, even if you look at our uh, total, our industries, Industries are not at full capacity. Yeah, they are running yeah. around 70, 65, 80 at maximum. No one is at full capacity. So there is room but for the production. the theory says it has to it be. It has to be. Yeah. That's, how, that's the only way it holds true. So if money is increased, if other things are held constant, then prices have to increase.